So before the break, we have learned how to do the non-parametric regression and how to do the uh, uh, to the smoothing spline when we have a roughness penalty to control the uh, roughness of the fitted curve. Uh, so this is for the general functions, right? So, but in reality, there may be some functions with some constraints, okay? Uh, so for example, maybe some functions require us uh, to be positive, okay? For example, like um, when we estimate the uh, precipitation functions, actually the amount of um, uh, rainforest cannot be negative, right? So it has to be positive. Um, and uh, all the x t the function have to be uh, always uh, monotone increasing or monotone decreasing. For example, when we estimated the growth curve, right, the height of human bodies over time, over the age, the, the height cannot be shrinking, right? So the height has to be monotone increasing. Therefore, uh, the growth curve is also has to be a monotone increasing function. And uh, so in uh, statistics, uh, we also have the density function, right? So we know uh, for the density function of any populations that uh, it has to be positive, and uh, it, uh, the integral of this function has to be equal to 1, right? Yeah, so we have this uh, kind of uh, constraints functions. So uh, in, the, in this lecture, uh, we will learn the, how can we estimate these constraints functions uh, using uh, basic function expansion. So the idea is to uh, uh, enforce these constraints by uh, some type of transformations. So uh, let's look at the first uh, um, constraints when the function is have to be positive, okay? So if we want to ensure the function to be positive, um, basically um, we can, we know the exponential of any function will be always positive, right? So therefore, we will try the transformation uh, x of t uh, equal to exponential to w of t. So uh, then, uh, if we write down it price x t equal to exponential of w t, we know that uh, w t uh, this x t will be always uh, positive uh, for any w of t, right? Therefore, um, we can estimate the w t here um, instead of estimate the x of t, and uh, we uh, in this case here w t will have no constraints, right? W t can be negative now. Um, uh, even w t is negative, when we take the exponential function, it will be always uh, always positive, right? And you can imagine, uh, for example, if uh, uh, if uh, w t will be very negative, then um, the exponential very negative number will close to zero, right? Yes, yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, so now uh, we will uh, repress there's no constraints on W T, and then we can uh, uh, express W of T as a linear combination of the basic functions, and we can also add the penalty on the W of T and to estimate this uh, uh, W T here. So basically, uh, we will uh, replace uh, X of T, we will still estimate W of T by minimize the, um, penalize the sum square error, and uh, so here, um, um, uh, so x of t is replaced by the exponential w of t, and uh, on the we also have a penalty term on the w of t, right? Um, okay, so this is uh, the criteria we used to estimate the coefficient to the w of t, and uh, you can see here now uh, because. Uh, the first term is a nonlinear function of the co of the basic coefficients. Therefore, there is no uh, closed formula for the basic coefficients. Um, but uh, but for this uh, criterion, it's still a complex function. So there is only one global minima. Okay. So we can do uh, using uh, numerical quadrature, uh, numerical optimization to find the basic coefficients and it's generally pretty fast. So this is for the 
on quality of estimation, if you want to estimate the quality of functions. Any questions? Okay, so, so here is the uh, here is the ideas of the estimated functions. So here, um, uh, this is show the results when we estimate the uh, precipitations. So here, um, the blue lines is for the when we don't have any constraints. We have the penalty lambda equal to ten to four, and the uh, the this. Uh, This green line here is the when we have this positive constraints and we using the lambda equal to 10 to 4. You can see here uh, this, uh, this green line here actually is uh, much more smoothing than the, uh, than the blue lines, right? Even using the same uh, value of the lambda. So this kind of give you the message that uh, when we uh, add these uh, constraints, um, uh, considerations actually we make the XOT extra smooth, okay? Because we make sure the X will be always a uh, positive, right? So, uh, for example, the red curve mm -hmm. correspond to the um, positive constraints smoothing when lambda equal to ten to two. So you can see here with a smaller value of lambda, uh, it has the estimation actually is pretty close to the blue curve when there's no constraints and but the value of lambda is higher, 10 to 4, okay? Yeah, so this, this just gave you the ideas. Uh, when you put the constraints on the functions, actually you put the um, extra smooth control, okay? So generally you will have uh, uh, smaller values of the, for the smoothing parameter lambda. Okay, so now let's look at uh, uh, the second constraint function, uh, the monotone, uh, monotone function. So here, um, uh, the left side is to show uh, the one boy, uh, the growth of one boy uh, from the age, the height of a boy from age one to age eighteen. Okay, so we can see here uh, for this uh, uh, for this growth curve, actually it's a monotone increase curve, right? Okay, and uh, so uh, if you look at uh, the derivative of the uh, function, uh, it will be uh, always uh, positive, right? Yes. Okay, so um, how can we uh, estimate this monotone uh, functions? Uh, so here, because we want xt to be always increasing, in calculus, we know that in order to be have a function to be always increasing, we just want to make sure the first derivative of the function to be always the positive, right? Yes. So um, to make sure the first derivative to be always the positive, we just want to make sure we can write down the derivative of the function to be equal to its potential of uh, w of t, right? In this case, uh, for any w of t, the derivative of x t will be always the positive. Therefore, x of t will be always uh, uh, monotone increasing, right? Yes. Okay, so if we represent this uh, derivative x of t equal to the potential to the w of t, then we can um, write down the x t equal to uh, a constant alpha plus the integral of uh, the potential of w s ds, right? So now we have this uh, formula for the x of t. Okay, so now we can estimate W of t directly without any constraints instead of estimate X of t, right? Okay, so because there's no constraints on the W of t, we can write down W of t as a linear combination of the basic functions. So W of t here equal to phi t transpose times c. So now, uh, again, uh, we can estimate this uh, um, basic coefficients by minimizing the penalized sum square error. And uh, so here, uh, we replace the x 
Ti as this uh, alpha plus integral uh, of EWS ds, right? And we also have can have a, a roughness penalty on the W of T. And again, here uh, this criterion is a nonlinear function of basic coefficients, so there's no closed formula for the basic coefficients. Um, but again, this is a convex problem, so uh, there's a, a global optimum available. Um, and uh, if you think about, uh, if we define the um, roughness penalty with the second derivative, so then, um, then we know that uh, uh, if WT is a linear function, then it will get no penalty, right? So in that case, if WT is a linear function, actually the corresponding to XT equal to E alpha plus uh, exponential to beta of T, right? In other words, uh, if we use the second derivative uh, as the penalty, then any exponential function will get no penalty here, right? Yes. Uh, this makes sense because uh, we can imagine the exponential function will be a very smooth uh, monotone increasing function, right? So there's no reason to penalize the exponential function. Okay. Um, so uh, this is uh, this is uh, uh, the second uh, uh, type of constraint function. Uh, so another constraint function is the density function, right? So here, uh, this to show you um, the position of beetles uh, uh, in angles, and uh, so here, uh, this uh, left side is to show the histogram of the uh, beetles in angles, and uh, so we want to estimate these density functions, okay? So we know when we estimate these density functions, uh, we want to make sure that the integral density function is equal to 1, right? And also the density function has to be positive all the time. So what can, how can we do? Uh, so what we can do is that uh, um, because x of t has to be always positive, so we can firstly write down um, xt equal to exponential of w of t, right? And then uh, we also want, want the integral of xt equal to 1. So therefore, we can divide the this e w of t by, uh, exponential, by the integral of e w of t over the whole interval, right? So if we write down in this way, then the integral of xt will be always, always equal to 1, right? Yes. Okay. So um, so this is the uh, this is the, the new uh, representation for x of t if x of t is a density function. Okay. So now uh, we have the observations uh, t one to t n. So we need to find the objective to minimize um, to estimate the x of t. So what we can do is we can write down the likelihood function of t1 to tn. So, um, so because uh, uh, the density function is equal to this, right? So we know that uh, the likelihood function will be just equal to the uh, product of the density function, right? And then we take the uh, log of the likelihood function will be the summation of the log density function, right? So the summation of the log density function will just become uh, this so log of this density function we just say wt minus log of this integral right yes so then we can write down uh, this uh, log lag function in this form so uh, so this is the log lag function and then we can we try to uh, minimize maximize the log lag function log lag function right so in that case here we can also try to minimize the uh, negative log likelihood function. So we put a minus in the front, okay? And uh, we also can put a roughness penalty on the W of T to control the smoothness of, our, of W of T, right? So therefore, we can estimate the uh, coefficients to this basic function by minimize this uh, penalized negative log likelihood function. <coughs> Again, here, uh, there's no closed formula 
um, for the basic coefficients. So we can use a uh, numerical methods um, to estimate uh, these uh, um, basic coefficients. Um, again, uh, for this uh, uh, density function, uh, if you think about uh, this density function, um, so basically uh, the density function xt here is a uh, is EWT divided by the integral. Basically, the integral is a constant c, right? So basically, s of t is equal to a constant c times uh, exponential to wt. So if you think about this form for this density function x of t, and uh, so the most uh, common density function we're working on is the normal density function, right? So this is a formula for the density function of our normal density function. And you can see here, uh, in this case here, um, wt will be just equal to the quadratic function of t, right? Yes. So in this case here, uh, if we think the normal density function is smooth enough, we don't want to put any penalty on the normal density function. In that case here, we will not penalize the second the the quadratic function in the in the wt, right? Therefore, we can uh, calculate. Uh, we can write down the penalty as the using the third derivative of wt. In this case here, when wt equal to the uh, quadratic function of t, it will get a no penalty, right? In other words, uh, if the density function is normal <coughs> density function, it will get a no penalty if we using the third derivative to define the reference penalty. Um, similarly, uh, if we using the second derivative to define the <coughs> reference penalty, um, basically we will penal don't penalize the e two linear function of t, right? So in that case here, this will be just a exponential function. So, um, so, so if we define the uh, second derivative to define the roughly penalty on wt, basically here we will penalize, we will not penalize any function close to exponential density function, but we will penalize normal density function, right? Okay. So this is a kind of give you the ideas. Uh, if you define the different type of uh, roughness penalty, you will assume a different type of smoothness on the density function. Okay. Any questions here? Okay, uh, so here, uh, this is just to give you the ideas on uh, how the uh, estimation looks like. So uh, the right part is don't have the penalty term, and uh, the right, the left, the right part is when we have the penalty term on the estimation. So you can see the right part has a very nice smooth density function. So here is the uh, summary of the estimation for the constraint function. So the idea is, is very simple. So basically we will instead of estimate x of t, we will estimate a transformation of x of t. So if, if you want x t to be always positive, you will write on st as equal to the potential of a uh, uh, function w of t. If you want xt to be more to increasing function, you can write down, um, you want to make sure x, the ratio xt is always positive. So in that case, you will write down st equal to alpha plus integral of e to uh, ws. And if you, and, uh, you all want to estimate the density function uh, xt, the density function xt, the integral will have to be equal to 1. In that case, you will express xt as a exponential of ewt over the integral of ewt dt. Okay, um, so uh, so for all these uh, uh, three uh, transformations, uh, then the we will estimate the basic coefficients for wt by minimize the uh, penalized uh, sum square error. And uh, so for the third case, when we have density function, we will estimate the coefficients by minimizing the uh, penalized uh, negative log left function. 
Um, yeah, so we don't have a code formula for the basic coefficients, but we can obtain them by some numerical mm -hmm. method. Okay.